Hello ladies, welcome back. Today I'm sharing part three of my manifestation series and entire process in celebration of reaching 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. So I've already filmed and posted part one and part two of these series and I will go ahead and link those in the description box as well as put it um, in the first uh, comment. This is part three. So part one was decode and decide. Part two is manifest, like bring into form. And part three is normalize. And each part is important, but honestly, I feel like the inner work in part one continues in part three. So these kind of like go hand in hand. Do not try to skip a step is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> They're very important. Okay, so part three is all about normalize and repeat. What happens when we manifest haphazardly or one off, you know, we haven't done our inner work is that it's not really repeatable. And I've seen very many people be able to manifest something big and then they either lose it or can't manifest again. They become this one hit wonder of manifesting and they can get really depressed and down. I don't know if any of you guys have experienced this or have maybe friends or family members that have like, because once you've seen yourself be able to do it like manifest or you've experienced the good life and then like you lose it that can be really hard and this is why i do stress the importance of actually doing your inner work and making this a normal part of your life like every day so normalizing is all about receiving the item and then not sabotaging it and using that item whatever you manifested side note i wasn't planning on talking about this but let me talk about this here i talked about this in my barcut course you are going to have a way harder time manifesting if you differentiate between material things and non-material things so if you think like if you say things like i'm not a materialistic person i just want a husband i'm not really a materialistic person i just want children you are a materialistic person because unless you want a husband and kids just in your mind, like you don't, you just want to visit them in your dreams. If you th want them in material form, you are a materialistic person. We, all of us having this human experience, we are all materialistic people. Non-materialistic people are not on this planet. They're non-physical. They're like in the metaphysical plane. So all of us are materialistic. We just want different material things a husband is a material thing unless you only want to astral travel to him in your mind right so you are going to have such an ease manifesting if you let go of this whole materialistic thing <laughs> trust me because if you want something here on this planet you need it to be material to experience it here so to normalize is to make it something that's no big deal in your life and when we do that, coupled with inner work, we can really compound. For example, if you manifested $10,000 and then you normalize it, like you were like, oh my God, yes, this gets to be my new normal. Like I, of course, get to have $10,000. Why would I not? Like I can't even imagine a world where I didn't have $10,000. If you could normalize it first, you're not going to need to like spend it all or like, you know, it's not gonna burn a hole in your wallet. You're not gonna like get into an accident, God forbid, or some emergency where you have to use up that $10,000. You've normalized it. It's your new, like, it's like no big deal in your life, right? It's just something that you do. You manifest $10,000. The second way this is going to help you is that when you wanna manifest $20,000, it's easier because you're not going from zero to 20, you're going from 10 to 20. And the inner work that you did to get to 10, you're just compounding it to 20. So it becomes so much easier when you normalize something. It is just a part of your reality. You cannot imagine a reality where this thing wasn't true for you. So here are some ways that I've done this and some things to look out for. Number one, when the thing actually shows up, be very mindful of your nervous system be very mindful all of the tips techniques embodiment practices all of the work that you've been doing with me in the basic babe bundle in the sacred feminine intensive 
in all of these like embodiment courses that you've done with me, you know that any little thing before you act out in the physical, it shows up inside of your body. So if you can catch the panic in your body before you have the panic attack, you're going to be able to resolve it. Before you catch that uncomfort of having whatever you have already manifested and then start sabotaging it, physically you will see it coming up in your body as tightness and as unease as however you experience your internal experience right in your body so be extra cautious of your nervous system in this point um you know this is where meditation your feminine practices everything you've been learning with me you want to make sure you're not skipping them when you have manifested something new and big in your reality so for example when we manifested this mansion we already knew that luck there's five of us and there's going to be container issues popping up there's going to be self-sabotage there's it's we this was a big jump for my family like from that house to this house it's a completely different reality so all of us we were we were like game on like we were like okay guys do not skip the meditation we're not skipping the journaling if anything comes up we're discussing it right we were also offering grace to each other if someone was having a container issue and and being some kind of way so that's how it, it's like i don't have to do this to manifest like shoes at this point or a handbag because that is my reality right uh, i've been doing that for a long time but when i'm making such a big leap yes i was meditating every day i was journaling every day like i was game on like what i call athlete mode mode that was me okay so me be mindful second thing i'm going to say is that change your external environment as much as possible to welcome this new thing now you should have already been doing that in step two we talked about that in step two but you especially want to not let that go in step three okay because if you don't change your external environment to meet the new reality oftentimes the you know we've talked about before that i um intersection of identities the old identity can pop up because there's too many too many tokens in your current environment reminding it about the old environment so let me give you an i'm trying to find like a good example of this so for example if you had manifested a whole bunch of weight loss and like are in your dream body personally i would get rid of those oversized clothes because you're not trying to go back there right like i would get rid of the kind of things that got you tr in trouble in the first place eating the things that you shouldn't be eating right like so i would get rid of those foods in your household i would make my environment match this new reality so much so that i'm not having to use a lot of willpower with my old identity like she's gone right like why why does her outfit like why is her wardrobe still in my closet why is her food still in my pantry in my refrigerator so change up the physical as much as possible we're taking care of the internal we're being mindful of the nervous system we're being athlete mode with our meditation with our journal with our embodiment practices we're taking care of the outside environment so that it's easier to be in the new identity and so we don't sabotage because this is just how we're normalizing, okay? Now, here's the repeat part. So part three that I want to share with you is that there's two different day, ways that I manifest big things and normalize them. One way is I is something I call stacking the blessing. So I will manifest something and then like, yes, oh my God. And then I will use the high vibration of manifesting that thing to call in something next to call in something else and i call this stacking the blessings because remember i'm already in a very high vibration from manifesting this thing might as well use that vibration and compound it into manifesting the next thing okay and so i'll just keep doing that and then it, it automatically normalizes the first thing because i'm like oh that was like three manifestations ago like of course i get to have that right like that's just our reality however at other times i do what i call a rest and digest how i know the difference is intuition so going back to step number one 
I have a very healed and very well used and really well like established relationship with my intuition at this point. It's like any relationship, the more you have that faith and that trust, it grows and it becomes more robust. So I just internally know whether I'm in the stacking the blessings mode or if I'm in the rest and digest mode. Um, right now in my life, I'm definitely in the the stacking the blessings mode. I am just like one manifestation into next manifestation into next manifestation. But there are periods in my life where I'll get something and I'll know internally that this is a rest and digest. What is rest and digest for me? It means really, really, really savoring and enjoying the experience of having that manifestation. Like really, like you guys remember from my friend Fortune Container course, I mean like level eight, nine, 10. Okay, you guys remember that ten, the 10 levels in there? We're talking about level eight, nine, 10. And just being with that manifestation on a cellular level. Now, when I am in stacking the blessings, I'm still doing that. You don't wanna be like, mm, you know, because then you're not, using the compounded vibration from that to call in the new things. So I'm still doing that. I'm just able to do it faster. But for other things, my internal, my intuition says, no babe, like rest and digest, like, like be with this. And when I'm with it and I'm enjoying it and I'm, I'm like just relishing in it, I can like literally physically feel my container expanding. And then when I'm ready to go to the next thing, the next desire will come in and I will internally know it's time. Of course, all of this stuff took time for me to develop. I learned about the law of attraction in 2007. So I have been practicing it as if it was my religion since then. That is a lot of years of practice, right? Like a lot of years of practice. I found out about it in 2006, but like I really started practicing it like really, really in 2007 and it has been my way of life. So this is what I would recommend is make it your every day because if you're just doing it here and there, just like journaling, you guys remember when I started journaling, I would only do it when something went really, really well or if something was going wrong and it wasn't like a normal part of my life. Then when I decided, no, journaling gets to be a normal part of my life. Like I get to no journal even on like casual days when there isn't a high or a low. And that was a game changer because it became a part of my everyday conversation with my psyche and with God. And so the same thing with the law of attraction is that I've made it my everyday conversation with God. It's not something I do sometimes and therefore I'm not good at it. I'm really, really brilliant at it because I do it all the time and I get better and better and better. Okay. So um, one kind of affirmation or mantra that I can give for, for you would be, this gets to be my new normal. Of course I get to have this. Like why would not, why would I not? What kind of a reality would I even be living on where I didn't get to have this? Like, of course, like those are kind of conversations that I will have with myself when I'm like in the midst of a big manifestation. Okay. Couple of announcements. And then I want to talk to you about manifesting with other people, because when you're in a relationship, there is a little bit of a different dynamic that can play out. So the announcements are today is the last day to get my million dollar manifesting babes manifestation course um, for a discount. It's a flash sale. This is going to be my beginner level or my mid level people for manifesting. This is going to be a great course for you. It is a 12 workshop course. There's lots of amazing juicy content in there. Um, if you watch this, there's going to be at least six or seven things that will just really resonate with you and change your life. And then other things that you might be like, oh, I've heard that before, or maybe I'm not there yet. Maybe I'm not ready to start practicing it. So revisit it often. A lot of my students have said that they watched it you know, two, three, four times and learned completely different things. Because remember, as you grow, your eyes and ears change and you it's almost like a different person watching that, that content. So there are things in there that will change your life. 
that that chorus is where that statement that i always make originated which is that god will never run out i explain in there through the lens of quantum physics how god will never run out so that is linked in the description box it is a it's a low priced offer it's discounted on top of that right now there's no code needed we have a firm klarna and afterpay at checkout available for us citizens and also paypal if you choose that offer offers a payment plans for some people as well i don't know if it's based on country or your credit i'm not sure but it does offer that the other thing i want to say is that there's nine days left uh, for the millionaires miami in-person event consider this your last call this wednesday is the cutoff that we have to give them the final head count we have 33 people right now i'm super happy with that number and feel really grateful to be doing this with so many high vibration women um, but if you want to join and you feel like you need to be on in that table in that room with us then there is still time for you to join in um so that is linked in the description box also half of the seats for the cash metaphysics of money hawaii intensive happening on my mom's birthday of course this is our second year in a row that i'm teaching this on my mom's birthday on two of her favorite topics money and savageness so it's going to be a lot of that sheena energy coupled with my uh, own work of course and half of the seats are gone we do only have 14 seats available for this intensive so if this is calling out to you definitely check that out it's linked in the description box so let's wrap this up by talking about manifesting with other people so i believe that i am a creator of my own reality right like i am calling in the things that i do the inner work for that i am a vibrational match for and that i get to have and when you are married and you have children and you are a household there is your energy and your manifestations and then there's their energy and their manifestations and then there's like the family manifestations so for like the example that i used for you with this house we manifested this house as a family and so we had to be mindful of everyone's vibration and i don't think that i'm at that point in my life where other people's vibrations ruin my vibration like I am usually the highest vibration in every room and I can hold that stance however if you are in the beginning stages of inner work and manifesting and you live with a very negative person or someone that is having a container issue just be mindful that that can affect you and what can help is emptying out your centers so spending time alone doing those um, journal prompts and the, the manifestation techniques that I have taught you guys in the in my manifestation courses like be at lead mode for those right so there's at lead mode and then there's a maintenance mode if you live with someone that you feel really affects your vibration you want to be in at lead mode when you are manifesting at least those bigger items okay the other thing I'm going to say is like having grace like there are things that um, we are manifesting together and then we'll manifest it and, and maybe I'm not having a container issue but my partner or my kids are or maybe I'm having a container issue and they're not so we do offer that grace to each other and um, being kind and nice so we, we won't bring it up necessarily in the moment but when that person is like done having their like container issue whatever or as at least like in the down roll spiral we might say haha it seems like you know you're having a container issue like and we'll like be there for them to like discuss that process and this has been really helpful for me as a family because we're all kind of uplifting each other and and helping each other do that in our work because you know as my kids get older and they're going to be going on their own adventures like you guys know my oldest is 18 and he's traveling like uh he's planning his first like solo trip and things like that i want him to be able to take everything that he's learned in this household with manifesting and his inner work and be able to do that on his own as well outside of this household so i feel really confident in him being able to do that because we did offer him that support and those techniques while he was living at home so i do recommend you know doing this as a family if you are a family however having said that for many years i did it on my own because 
Um, I didn't want to impose my belief systems on my husband or my friends and family members. So for like more than a decade, I practiced all my manifestation on my own because I don't let anything be an excuse. Like I would never be the kind of person that would be like, well, my husband doesn't believe in the law of attraction. So I guess I can't have like, no, I get to have it. Like I get to have whatever I want. <laughs> Other people's, um, I'm not dependent on someone else to manifest. So I did do it for over a decade on my own. But when the timing was right, I slowly meta updated my husband and my kids have been brought up in this like manifestation, manifesting with God kind of culture. And so we've made it like our normal for our family. And that does help, um, but you know, don't let that be an excuse. I What I don't want you to do is saying, well, of course it's easier for me now because her husband and her kids do it with her. I did it on my own for a really long time. In fact, I manifested my husband by doing it on my own. So don't let anything be an excuse to stop you. Your relationship with God is your relationship with God. There is no other person in between that. Like it's just you and God, okay? So don't let that deter you in any way. And I hope you enjoyed this three-part series. I don't know how long I will be keeping this up, so make sure you watch it and get everything that you um, want out of it. And check out the courses and the intensives that I mentioned in the description box, and I will also pin it to the first comment. I love you, I'll see you in the next one.